Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to analyze non-normal data in AMOS, the Structural Equation Modeling Software Program. So one of the fundamental assumptions of AMOS is that uh, your data is normally distributed. Um, but there's uh, a lot of social science research out there uh, in the past that has uh, basically stated that the vast majority of uh, social science research is non-normally distributed. Um, and oftentimes you'll see people just ignore the normality assumption and just move on or they'll say well my sample size is large enough and there's an assumption of normality because it's so big. Um, but I don't necessarily know that that's always the case just because you have a large sample size doesn't mean it can't be skewed uh, or have some kurtosis or you know some of those things too. So to analyze kind of non-normal data, you know, to kind of, if you will, to normalize the data in Amos, the way that we're going to do this is you have to use a bootstrap technique. And if you're not familiar with bootstraps, bootstraps is basically this kind of uh, resampling uh, of your data kind of over and over and over and over again uh, to where it kind of creates kind of this uh, pseudo population, if you will. And from that, it can kind of determine um, more kind of an accurate uh, assumption of normality because now you're talking about a very large number of samples that you can kind of re, uh, resample with kind of a replacement to kind of get a better understanding of the, uh, the estimates. And so to do this, we're going to jump into an example here, kind of a starting with a full structural model. And this is a kind of a simple model that came from a restaurant setting. And basically what it was is we were looking at customer delight. Uh, so people were delighted at their experience in the restaurant. And it started with, did the server kind of adapt their behavior to the, to the customer? Uh, and if they did, did that kind of create delight? And we had this construct called service scape, which was kind of the built environment around the service. So lighting, furnishing, seating, all those kind of things. And did that kind of contribute to customer delight? And then the two outcomes that came from this was, was positive word of mouth. And then the other one was tolerance to future failures, which means you'd be more tolerant to a failure in the future because you had such a great experience to start with in this experience. So we got kind of a simple kind of full structural model here. I've got the measurement properties included and you can see the structural paths here. So initially, if we, uh, we run this data uh, right, right now and we ran everything out, uh, initially this model looks great. Everything is significant, model fit is great, but let's make the assumption that our data was very non-normal. Well, how do I account for this then when I'm analyzing the data? Well, in the analysis properties, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the bootstrap tab at the top. And the first one we're going to check is we're going to perform bootstrap. Now, the default is 200. That's way too small number of samples. Uh, I like to use about 5,000. I, I figure at that point, you're, stitting, you're starting to get stability of results across this. Some people will do 10,000. I don't really see a difference between using 5,000 and 10,000. It's very small. Um, but I still think like a thousand is probably even a little small, but at 5,000 samples, again, you're starting to get really kind of uh, stable results. We're also going to click the bias corrected confidence intervals, uh, and we're going to change that from 90 to 95, because most of the time we're considered with 05 significance. Uh, and then we're also going to uh, click here, bootstrap maximum likelihood. Uh, and this is again to kind of uh, help us assess kind of our non-normal data. So this time we're going to run the data as a bootstrap and we're going to go look at the results and see from the bootstrap analysis do we still see the same results and do we have some confidence now that our data has been somewhat kind of normalized if you will with the bootstrap and do I still get those kind of same results. So we're going to uh, calculate uh, estimates and that will take just a second and you'll see down here that uh, when it's done uh, and then we're going to hit our text output. So initially if we just look in our estimates here you'll see our unstandardized at the top and our T values and then we have our standardized regression weights down here at the bottom and initially again everything looks great uh, so no problems there but now let's assess you know uh, our estimates via the bootstrap so we want to go under the estimates link under uh, this next hyperlink called scalars and within that you'll see uh, one tab that says regression weights and this is just simply the unstandardized 
uh, regression weights that you just saw, or you can click standardize regression weights, and I'll show them individually. Uh, so this, again, doesn't tell us the bootstrap, but it's kind of one of our first steps we need to find the bootstrap. So since this is um, a single sample and we want to compare uh, paths, let's just go ahead and click the standardized regression weights. And then next we need to go down here in the very bottom where it says bootstrap confidence, and we're going to click that link. So what that does now is it's still presenting my standardized regression weights over here, but now I have run a bootstrap estimate for each one of those estimates, uh, too, with that 5,000 samples. So it's going to give us a confidence interval, too. So you can see at the very top one, the adaptive behavior to customer delight, our estimate, our standardized estimate was 0.59. And if you look at the, uh, the lower bound and the upper bound, well, my estimate falls within that confidence interval and it even gives you a p-value of a significance of 0.001. And so what it'll do is it will give you an estimate for each one, uh, a bootstrap estimate for each one of those regression uh, weights that you had from the standardized and unstandardized. So if I wanted to go back up and just look at the unstandardized, I'd go back up into the estimates and scalars and just click regression weights and then click back on these bias confidence intervals and now you can see I've got the unstandardized um, upper and lower bound bootstrap and then also the significance. So at this point uh, now I've got some confidence in my estimates uh, that the ones that I found there's a confidence interval of 5,000 that says okay now I've got confidence maybe my data was non-normal but through this bootstrap estimate now I can have some confidence that these are still present there uh, and they're significant. The thing that you have to kind of watch out for too with using bootstrap estimates uh, sometimes is, and really when you're trying to estimate a, a model too via bootstrap is model fit. So if we go down to our model fit and look at it initially, man, everything looks pretty good. CFI 0.98, uh, my uh, chi-square divided by degrees of freedom is 1.7, my root mean square 0.03, uh, man, everything's great. But what you oftentimes need to do is you need to assess model fit via the bootstrap estimates too. And this is done through the Bolin and Stein. Um, and so if we go back into our analysis properties and we go back to bootstrap and you'll see down here where it says Bolin and Stein bootstrap. Uh, and so this is going to assess again kind of model fit as a whole. Now what we do need to do uh, is um, just so that you're fully aware like if you uh, click Bolin and Stein bootstrapped initially to start with um, it will not give you the confidence interval. That's kind of one of the quirkiness, I guess, a little bit of Amos, uh, too. Like it says, if you click this bias corrected confidence interval, it won't give you the, uh, the bootstrap estimates. It'll only give you the Bolin and Stein, but it won't give you the bootstrap. So if you're really you're just concerned with the, the model fit at that point, um, you just need to kind of know that going into it, that if I'm looking for the estimates, well, I can't run the Bolin and Stein with it because it won't give it to me. All right, but we've already run our estimates and so now we know uh, that everything was significant and so now we're going to run the Bolin uh, Stein bootstrap and we're going to run it again. So again we're going to calculate our estimates. Uh, it's going to take just a second to run through all 5,000 but Amos is pretty quick about turning those around. Um, and so now let's go back into the data. So now down here you can see uh, there's a link that says Bolin and Stein Bootstrap. And if we click that, now it's going to give us the model fit um, can, in kind of this bootstrap. And it says, you know, and, and really what we're looking for here in this Bolin and Stein is we're looking for, uh, for non-significance, uh, saying that our, our model fit for the most part um, does not get substantially, you know, uh, worse uh, through this whole process. 
And so you can see the breakdown here, you know, it says model fit uh, in essence was better in 4,300 bootstrap samples. It was equally as well in zero, but it was worse in 700. Um, but as a whole, you're testing, and this is out of the 5,000 again that we, we chose. So testing that null hypothesis that, that the model is correct. And basically, McGowan and Stein's bootstrap says there's a non-significance there, so which means your model fit is still appropriate. Now, if it was significant, then you're going to have issues that you can probably have to kind of retreat back and kind of see why you're having so many kind of issues with model fit. My guess is you're, you're, you're more than likely going to have model fit issues even before Bolin and Stein if this one comes out significant. Another thing that you can look at, too, is what they call the summary of bootstrap iterations, too. Um, uh, and even bootstrap distributions. And I like this one a little bit, too. So if you look at our model fit here, you can see... Um, our chi-square was at 225 uh, and if we go into the bootstrap distributions you can see well our our chi-square kind of falls within that distribution if you will you know pretty right in the middle for the most part so we're not on the ends even of our our bootstrap distribution when it's trying to calculate uh, kind of model fit and chi-square but this is just a um, an, an alternative or basically a way if you kind of assess if you get in there and you have non-normal data and you want to kind of show the validity of your results uh, and not just present estimates but maybe you can also do bootstrap estimates of those and it gives you a little bit more credence to saying no my, my even though my data might be slightly skewed or there's some kurtosis there even via the bootstraps it's still showing significance they all fall within their confidence interval and we've got some uh, some confidence in the results even though the data might be uh, slightly non-normal uh, from that uh, but that's it kind of quick and dirty uh, on how to analyze your uh, non-normal data uh, so that's all I've got. Um, if you want more information on how to analyze kind of non-normal data or just more information on SIM as well, I uh, encourage you to check out my book called Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. It's at most major bookstores, and I'm going to put the uh, link down in the description. Uh, as always, if you uh, saw value in the video, I'd ask that you like and subscribe. Uh, more videos to come, and I hope you all have a good day, good people.